and action. Okay, this is something a little bit different, not really car related as such today, but it's uh, an old, uh, well not an old, it's, we're doing hydraulic riveting on an old, uh, this is a water tank for, uh, I think it was about 1912 George White steam engine. It is a fully welded tank, we're just, the rivets are all dummy rivets, that's all they are, they're just for aesthetics only. But well, that'll be a neat video to kind of what we do and go through, because actually this all started years ago, this is a fender off my Rumley over there. And it had the same thing, quarter inch flathead rivets that did like that. So years ago, this is going back years ago, this actually came out of a field, just by Saskatchewan border. These are junk, but they're good enough for patterns. So those ones, we've got to make new ones up. But anyways, the whole point of this, we made a hydraulic rivet up. The throat, in retrospect, I should have made deeper. I think it was the biggest piece of steel I had at the time. It's welded up, everyone's in line. How it works, I don't know if Casey can get here. This guy's actually a, uh, a spacer, just because to get around the, the curve here. I don't know. Yeah, right here, right there. The part with the green on it is actually a spacer because it gets a part. You'll see in a minute here when we do the the curve here, we need more clearance out. So this comes out. So it'll do. It'll it'll squeeze a two inch rivet for a quarter inch is fine. It is a ten ton ram. It's just a cheapy hydraulic auto uh, cylinder just for a ten thousand pound uh, little cylinder. Princess Auto. Princess Auto. It's worked so far. hasn't crapped out. So yep. buy them on sale. I think it was forty bucks. For what it is, it works quite fine. Yeah, uh, when you get to the mathematics size of squeezing rivets, 10 tons is about the limit for up to quarter inch. 5 sixteenths, it would probably squeeze, I don't know if it would do 100%, but again, for decorative, probably wouldn't really matter. But um, we were dicking around when we first did it. There's kind of your general idea when it squeezes here. We dicked around with different heights. That's just the, the chatter from the tool doing that. We just dicked around with different heights. Then the beginning ones, you can see we weren't dead in line, then we made it in line. Works pretty good. Uh, Rivets I just get from McMaster Car because they're cheap and easy to get. No one up here carries rivets really anymore for the most part. Uh, the only difference on this guy is you got to be careful when you do it. Oh, I've kind of hurt a bit. Right on, right on the butt cheek. Is this going to be a split on Chris? No, luckily it didn't split. It hit right here on my butt. But the only thing is you got to be down low on here. Just to have the clearance down in here. I don't know if Casey can see that there. This is oh, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, there's a shocker. It's milled flat. Come underneath here. It's milled flat here to get there because you need more clearance to get up in I there. I have no idea if I'm getting it. Yeah, you're supposed to raise where my fingers. You see it's milled flat. Yeah, whatever. <sighs> I don't know if I'm getting it. Good helps hard to find, folks. It really is. But yeah, and we got just a ghetto set up here just with a cheapy <laughs> crane. And it was came from an old company up here, Tool Town. I just put it on the back yep. just with a receiver hitch on the back or just the Jimmy we're working on or Blaze or whatever it is. Yeah. And it works pretty good. Is yet on the back? This was supposed to be on the road by now. It's not, as you can see, it's still sitting here. Corey wants it. Yeah, Corey wants it. Corey wants a lot of things. Okay, put it down, put it down. I think I kind of... Like I said, it's, I'm, I shouldn't be doing this outside, but I am because I said the shop's so much, so much crap in it. <clears throat> and then how this guy works here... Is, since this is a flathead rivet, I guess I should have went over the rivets here. They're just a, a regular flathead rivet, a quarter inch flathead rivet. These ones are half inch long. It's eighth inch wide steel, so the grip range is within the realm. You can see all the ones we did here. All you do is you put it in the hole. I guess we should have plugged the... Oh, maybe are we plugged in, Casey? And see, it goes fast and it just goes, you ready, Casey? Yeah. And you just... That's it. And you can see here, I just have clearance around. That's why I had to have the extension out because originally this is further back in there. For the flats, it's fine. Release it. I want to get a shot of the first, the, the back and the front here. I don't know if you got to get that close or not, but like I said, it's not 100% because also what's happening here on some of them where the weld, it kicks us up a little bit. I'm not going to start grinding the weld. I'm not going to grind anymore up the tool. Like I said, probably say about three times this is just for decorative purposes only if it wasn't decorative i'd be a little bit more concerned but since it's decorative i don't worry i don't even know why this this doesn't add any decoration well no because originally it was riveted the originals were riveted so he wants it to make it look just like the originals by the time these are blasted oh. and painted you wouldn't be able to tell basically the difference so i'm going to go grab another rivet there and we'll uh, pound a few more in just to show how it goes and yeah like said, something a little bit different here folks I just buy them by the pound. See? That's from... Most of you are very familiar with McMaster Car. Kind of the shits up in Canada here. We can't order, open new accounts. And luckily we ordered one years ago at work there. So I just piggyback off of theirs. But you can't, as far as I know, they won't let Canadians open new accounts anymore. Which kind of sucks. That's what do you do. Princess Auto doesn't carry them? No. The bad marketing. 
Well, I think this is such a limited appeal to this stuff. Why would they, you know? Why are you going to carry something you're just going to have to sit on the inventory for? You have to tell the person. Well, never carry them probably. Oh, I didn't get that. Oh. So you can just put it in. You ready? Yeah. Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> Clip it. Keep this in, Chris. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> what? I shouldn't laugh. We did all these rivets fine. I think we did 72 so far. And we're just about to finish up in the well trades. <laughs> well, at least it formed the rivet, okay? It didn't do any damage to the tank. Oh, which is well, good. actually, it might have. No, I have a little bit of scratch. That's just a scratch. That's not going to hurt. Well. Me. Fire the welder here. Well, at least the weld looked like it broke on the weld. Yeah, it did, because you can see... Because, yeah, it's, it's got penetration to both sides. Well, that was not planned, folks. <laughs> that was not. You thought we'd make it... it was, it's going to be hot as hell today. It's going to be like, like 90 some. so we'll do this in the morning. I figured we'd get a video done. Is um, this a video, or...? I don't know if there's ever going to be a video or not. That's up to those guys to decide if they want to do it or not. If I do redo this, what I'll do is I'll weld it, and then I'll put uh, probably a gusset or a fish plate down more on it. Look at how it broke. Yeah. The only thing that sucks now, I gotta realign everything. That's why the one shim is in here to align it all. That's why the shim could come out. Actually, just sitting there. So that's when we did the shim was in there. Ah, <laughs> I hope it's not a precursor the rest of my day here. What do you say, Casey? Um. It happened. Shit happens. Huh. What? Okay. I wasn't expecting that. No, neither was I. It kind of scared the I... shit out of me. Okay, how did it not break here? Because it's barely holding on. Because it, it hinged down because all your force is here. So it acts oh. like a hinge wants to push it apart. So did the rivet get in? The rivet's done, yeah. Oh. It sunk the rivet in. No, that's not the right one. Because this one here was the one that broke Yeah. Up. Well, I guess we have to fix that. <sighs> if I feel um, really ambitious, I'll do it tonight, I guess. Well, saying that... You want to do it? If this video ever gets shown, like, like, and subscribe. I mean, this is, video is a little bit different than the norm stuff we do, but I thought it would be kind of just a neat video and everything went so good. I'm like, ah, oh, well, there's a few more to do. Cause to tell you the truth, I ran out of rivets. I don't know where the heck the rest of them went, so I just had the last few to do in here. So I'm like, ah, oh, we'll shoot a quick video on it. And this is what happened. This is what happened. Easier to stay inside and play video games, right, Casey? Maybe. I was editing my video, but... Well, I'll stop rounding. You, you might see a take two of this, folks, here, where I weld this back up and we finish riveting. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, like, share, subscribe. Mm-hmm. And then I'll see you on, well, maybe I won't see you. We'll see you again, folks. Bye-bye. Wait. Bye-bye. Don't do that. Okay, we're back. We went into the shop yesterday, me and Casey welded this up. I made a mistake when I made this. I didn't even bother putting gussets. We got the really old weld weld. Problem is, you can come around the front here, Casey. Yeah. My front. I forgot to put a weld here. Why I never did it, I don't remember. I guess I maybe had different ideas why I did or didn't do it. And it lasted all this time. And it essentially acted like a hinge. Like a hinge there, broke up. Pressed it back down, everything was good. Because when this was actually made, what it was, is it was welded on, machined, and then everything cut out there. Everything should have been in line as much as possible. Well, what do you think, Casey? Is the weld going to break or hold? Hopefully it will hold because I did some of it. Okay, you ready? I'm not in the right side. No, you're ready. Ready. Okay. There we go. So at least the weld didn't break there like last time. Nope. Let it off. Still looks like a rivet, Casey? Yeah. Which am I looking at? You're looking at this one we just did right here. Okay, I am looking at okay. that one. So what we'll do... Like I said, if I do lots of these, I'd probably have either, like we got big turntables and that at work. So I'm just kind of turning it around here, but I'm lazy. And I said, honestly, you've seen the inside of this shop. There's not a lot of room. You ready, Casey? Yeah. You see, I can just get a business card in there. So I'm okay as far as that distance. Kind of finds its own home. You saw that, what you saw? I don't know if Casey, man. You saw it comes in and kind of finds its own home. Put that off. And there you go. So that's uh, kind of hydraulic riveting. If anyone cares, I can't remember if I said in the beginning of the video, these are off a uh, 1912. I can't remember if it's a 17 or 20 horse George White that was made in Ontario. I think it's London, Ontario, but if I'm wrong, someone will correct me on that. 
Uh, this tank, all that's left to do on this one is I have to modify, you can come over this side, Casey, with the way how this, uh, the stiffener rib here is done, I have to mill off my little dies here a little bit on, I, I can just do one side, flip it rather than do them both. And then I just gotta put a slightly longer rivet in here. And then uh, there's two straps, we gotta cut them off and put, uh, we're gonna change the threads out on them. That just holds it down to the floor. And uh, yeah, that's it. These things are ready to be uh, blasted and painted. I, I'm assuming they're going black. I don't know, I kind of stay the heck out of that. That tank is gonna suck a little bit more because the middle row there, we've gotta do all with an air hammer because that I'm not making a throat that deep just to do one job. It's not worth the time or the effort. So like I said, again, they're if they weren't decorative rivets, I'd probably make something like this, make it a little bit better, design it, and actually make it so it comes down the force. But that's kind of, uh, yeah, hydraulic riveting a nutshell like this. I mean, just with homemade tools. If anyone cares, you know, it is a 10,000 PSI power pack with a 10,000 PSI RAM, 10 tons. You can look it up on the internet. I forget off the top of my head, but I think quarter inches right at eight, nine tons, 10 charts. And I charts I've seen over the years very slightly. But uh, yeah, quarter inch, 10 tons will do quarter inch, no problem. Cold, hot, obviously you can do more. So, much else to say there, Casey? You well, your well didn't break. It did not. That's a plus. So, yeah, that was my own stupidity. Why I never caught that up, I don't know. But And I said I got lazy. I just did a weave of the weld there just to give it more weld. Sometimes I'm lazy. Well. And it's hot as hell. You can see I'm dripping. Humidity is like 100%. It's like 90 above here right now. We're in the shade, so. Yeah. But Casey's going to camp next week here, so we wanted to get this done while he was still here because I needed a hand to do this. So. Yeah. I won't be in any videos. No, you'll be. Depending oh. if Chris puts this up. Well, Chris might put this up. We'll be in the middle of nowhere, so no internet access where he's going either. There is internet there. Oh, there is? Okay. Oh, see, folks, I'm sweating like a fat man right now, and I'm not hardly doing nothing. Well, like, like share, subscribe. Mm -hmm. And we'll yeah. catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.